You're listening to 7-Minute Stories with Aaron Califato. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and write a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your podcasts. And don't forget to tell a friend. Visit our merch page at 7minutestoriespod.com. That's the number 7, minutestoriespod.com. This episode, Something's Lost But Something's Gained. Or, The Legend of Ali and the Wiffle Ball. It's the bottom of the ninth. Bases loaded. Two outs. Two strikes. One more out. This thing is over. The crowd is cheering. You got to feel the anticipation in this ballpark. You could cut the tension with a knife. And there I stand at home plate with a big red baseball bat at the annual wiffle ball tournament. It all depends on me. Now you have to understand, I take this tournament very seriously. It happens once a year on Memorial Day, and my friend Dave, he hosts it at his family's house in our hometown. And in their backyard, it's, an, it's like an actual ballpark, like a mini Fenway with manicured grass, a diamond, the home run fence, scoreboard, and everything. It's really beautiful. And Dave invites his family and extended friends and family. And come to think of it, most of us don't even know each other. We're just called there every Memorial Day to the suburban ballpark. And we play wiffle ball from sunrise until sunset. Men and women and boys and girls and grandma and grandpa, we all play all day. And this was a midday game. So a lot of young adults, men and women, it was very competitive. And there I stood at home plate, feeling the pressure of this moment. I had played terribly all game. It was unlike me. I looked out into the crowd. There's Corey, my then girlfriend, my now fiance. She's cheering for me. Got to show off to her. I look at third base on my team and there's Dan, one of my best friends, and he's cheering for me. He goes, there's no one else I'd rather be out in that field with. There's no one else I'd rather have at this moment. Let's go. He's trying to fire me up. Everyone knew something was off. I wasn't performing like I usually do. And I thought to myself, maybe it's because of what happened with me and Corey earlier in the day that caused some sort of psychological block. But I didn't have time to think about it because the pitcher released the wiffle ball, and it floated up in the air. And all of a sudden, that fear just changed into utter hope and focus. And I turned and torqued my body and wrenched that red bat and made perfect contact. And next thing I know, the sound was like crack. Silence over the crowd. And I just saw this white lightning of a wiffle ball just fly out into left field, just over the outstretched arms of the outfielder. And as I'm rounding first, I realize I just hit a walk-off grand slam home run to win the game. It's one of the greatest athletic achievements in my entire life. I nearly cried. I'm rounding second. I can hear the cheers. I see Corey out, out there just jumping up and down. And as I'm rounding third, a very confident round of third, mind you. I see Dan at home plate and he's waiting for me with a big smile and he hugs me and high fives me and I'm jumping up and down in my glory. This one's for Ali. Now see, you don't know who Ali is and you also don't know what happened earlier in that day that could have been the spark for this very moment. So you see, earlier that day, Corey and I, we went out And it was just beautiful, sunny. We wanted to just enjoy the weather before the tournament. And we ended up going to this uh, elementary school park. Now, I know it's a little weird, but there was no kids there or anything. It was just us going to the playground. Just a couple of kids ourselves. We're playing on the monkey bars and swinging on the swings. We're laughing. I'm trying to flirt with her and show off and make her laugh. And I jump to, you know, one of the top of the contraptions, pretend to be Rocky. And I'm going across the monkey bars. It was awesome. She was smiling. Time flew. I mean, so fast that we realized, oh man, we're not going to make it to the wiffle ball tournament. We're going to be late. And so we start walking away back to our car. And as I take one last look at the playground, I notice on the wood chips there underneath some of the playground equipment, there was like this animal. It was breathing really funny, but it looked really beautiful. And it sounded though, like it was struggling. And we both were like, what the? We start going towards it. And I thought, it's a cat. And Corey's like, no, it's not a cat. And we got closer and closer. And I realized it's a baby deer. And it was just kind of moaning in pain. And it was breathing heavy. And its eye was wide open. And it was glazed over. But it was struggling. I didn't know what to do. 
So Corey's like, just try to talk to it and see if it'll get up. So I start talking to it. I say, hey, dear. Hey, dear. And she said, well, don't call it dear. Give it a name. Like, it's probably scared. So I said, okay, hey, Ali. She goes, why did you call it Ali? I said, I don't know. That's just the name that came to my head. So there it is. We called him Ali. I named him Ali. I said, Ali, don't worry, man. We're going to take care of you. It's all right. I know you're scared, but we got you, man. Don't worry. And so I like tried everything. I tried to clap to scare him. I tried to throw a wood chip near him, you know, and, and to see if he would run and he didn't. And I didn't know what to do. So we called like the animal control or whatever you call for animal people who know animals right that you're supposed to call and so we call no one's there and and ends up forwarding us to the police station so i'm talking to police station and they send an officer out so i got this 20 year old officer who pulls up in a cruiser and he goes what's going on i said this ali is laying i think he's really hurt he goes who's ali i said oh it's i'm sorry it's a baby deer and he comes up he goes oh man and now he's in it and he doesn't know what to do and we're all feeling for this deer and he goes well maybe if i pull its leg It'll jump up and some adrenaline will hit it. He goes, sometimes that happens and he'll run off into the forest. And so the officer pulled its leg and nothing. He just cried out in pain, the the deer. And the officer looked at me and said, hey, I don't know if there's anything else we can do. But what I'd suggest is you and your girlfriend, just please walk to your car and don't turn around because I don't think you're going to like what you see. And I said, what, what are you thinking about? Like what I see, it didn't even register. And Corey took my hand. And I turned around. I didn't want to leave Ali, but I, ha- I just walked and I wasn't 10 feet away. All of a sudden I turned around and I saw the officer with a gun to its head and I heard bang, bang, bang. Shots rang out. He shot Ali. And I, I just was felt terrible. I ain't terrible. I'm sitting in the car with Corey. She's in tears. And it was traumatic. It was very traumatic. And I was like, I felt like I had sentenced this poor animal to death. But Corey told me, she's like, look, you know, this animal was suffering anyways. It was really in pain. It was probably the best and only thing you could do. Now he's not in pain anymore. But it stuck with me. You see, he stuck with me. And it stuck with me on the car ride there. And it stuck with me when we got to the wiffle ball tournament and all through the game because I didn't perform well. And it stuck with me until it was the bottom of the ninth with two outs until I channeled Ali and I freaking turned on that ball and I hit a grand slam game winning home run because of Ali and that's why I pointed to the sky we're full circle now in the story as I crossed home plane I pointed to the sky and I said this one's for Ali and it was and it was weird because even when I left the wiffle ball turn I was sitting in the car with Corey and I said to her I said you know can we just put on some Joni Mitchell She said, why? I said, I don't know. There's just this one song that she sings. And I remember the lyric so clearly. It says, something's lost when something's gained, when living life every day. And this was one of those days. Seven Minute Stories is created and performed by Aaron Califato. Audio production by Ken Went. You can connect with Ken at media216.com. Original artwork done by Pete Whitehead. See Pete's work at petewhitehead.com. And lastly, I'm Corey Burse, and I coordinate the podcast. Make sure and tune in next week for another story.